There is a lot of competition when it comes to online education. Of course, there's Udacity, and there, other, especially when it comes to technical skills, um, the idea that you can teach these online. How do you stand out? You know, I think that uh, Coursera has great content from many top universities and so people that take Coursera courses are reassured that they're really high quality and in the case of deep learning, really bleeding edge AI, I don't think there's that much great content. You can get surface level cursory content but something that really lets you understand it, master it, know how it works in the industry, practice it, uh, there's not that, 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 that much well curated courses out there today. So there's a big shortage in AI talent. Yeah. Tell us how big and how serious this shortage is. You know, if you take seriously the idea that AI is the new electricity, think of how many electrical engineers uh, and how many electricians our society had to hire to take advantage of the capabilities of electricity. You know, if electric power in your house goes out, you find you suddenly miss it an awful lot. And I think we should be on the path to build an AI powered society. A decade from now, I want all of us to have great self driving cars, I want low cost, high quality healthcare for everyone, I want every child to have a personalized education. The only way for us to get there is the millions of people around the world building these great AI things. You uh, have an interesting view given that you worked at Baidu on the competition between the US and China for AI talent. How fierce is that competition? You know, I think the US China um, competition is a false dichotomy. Really? That I think the U.S. learns a lot from China. More and more, China's learned a lot from the U.S. And this is one of those things where the more people do it, the more we're all better off. Right, but we're not sharing resources. There's a finite amount of people, as you say. Uh, I think that the number of people that know AI is not finite. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but six years ago, my Coursera course, my machine learning course, launched uh, eventually wound up turning to Coursera. 1.8 million people since then, since six years ago, have signed up to take my old machine learning course. So we've brought a lot of people into machine learning. I hope that with the deep learning courses we just announced today, we'll bring maybe an equally large number of people into deep learning. You know, we've been talking a lot about the lack of women in tech, uh, you know, more women needing to know how to code, but it's not just about coding, it's getting women into these now more specialized fields like AI. Do you see any, do you see an overrepresentation of men in these fields as well? I think as a, I'm very fortunate to be married to Carol Riley, who's a co-founder of a, a autonomous driving company, Drive.ai. So in my house, I guess, there's one male AI leader and one female AI leader. So that seems quite balanced. But, but I, what about I, in the courses that you're teaching? I know. It is a serious issue. I think, I, I think that uh, uh, courses that are online uh, do give very, you know, do give equal access to all genders. Uh, but I think that so far, technical courses still tend to be more male dominated. I think there's important work for all of us to do. 